Let's talk about undervolting and why I've decided to do that on my Intel i7 CPU. The laptop we're talking today about is the GL752 VW series and it sucks for not being able to handle heat properly. Uh, it comes with the Intel i7 6700HQ and it has four cores in there, physical cores I mean, and a total of eight threads. And it comes equipped with a GTX 960M series graphics card. This is a decent gaming laptop. However, there's only one fan to remove 120 watts TDP worth of heat, which is quite a lot of heat. Right here is the only intake and over there is the only exhaust for this system. This amount of cooling is just inadequate for this setup and that's why I resort to undervolting. I believe any laptop user can definitely benefit from undervolting or downvolting the CPU. Now I'm going to tell you why. Here are some of the advantages here. You've got lower heat output and secondly you've got better performances in some cases which I'm going to tell you why later on. And last but not least lower power consumption. Uh, which could th theoretically give you a longer battery life on your laptop. I'm not here to prove it, so test it on your own accord there. Uh, this advantage is it's time consuming because you have to run stress test after stress test just to make sure any given voltage uh, you're setting at, your CPU is still running stable. Secondly, it's higher maintenance just because you have to start up the program every time you reset your computer or when your computer comes back on standby. And last but not least, if you do it wrongly, it could damage your CPU if you accidentally set or increase your voltage on your CPU by accident. To undervolt your CPU, you have to find the right program to do so. Uh, the program I find most helpful is the Intel Extreme Tuning Utility. So Google it up or search it in your browser and download and install this uh, Intel XTU program. Now let me show you what this laptop is fighting against in terms of heat here. So this program is Prime95. That is a program that stresses your CPU and make it produce the most amount of heat. So going back to the menu here, in this graph, it's been running about 10 minutes here. The sporadic green line that goes up and down there, that is called thermal uh, throttling, meaning your CPU is running too hot, so it backs off its speed and slow itself down. So lower speed equals lower heat uh, output there. On top of there, you should be able to see a red line that is the CPU temperature. As you can see, it's reaching around 90 degrees Celsius and that's very unhealthy for a CPU there. So generally, you want to keep it around 80 degrees Celsius. Uh, that'll be a very healthy temperature for your CPU. Uh, the only thing you really want to concern yourself upon is the core voltage offset. So basically, this changes your uh, voltages. Right. If your CPU is not really in use, it will use a low voltage and the offset will be an offset from that voltage they're using currently. So that's the only one you want to play with. It's like a dynamic uh, voltage offset settings there. Before you get started, you need two things. Firstly, Prime95. Uh, you can download this program and the link in the description below here. And the second thing you need to do is research what other people are getting for undervolting on your CPU. And uh, most likely someone already out there has attempted to undervolt uh, the CPU you have and uh, your results will be somewhat close to it, but every CPU is different from manufacturing uh, tolerances, so your experience will differ. Now let me get your attention back on screen here. So generally for most CPU, you can start at negative 80 uh, millivolts here. So go ahead, set it to negative 80. So let's go down from there. So negative 80 millivolts, select apply. And once you do so, go ahead, open up Prime95, which is, where is it hiding here? Ah, there you are. Okay, so go ahead and Prime95, open up to the torture test and you want to run the small FFTS. Uh, run this for 10 minutes and after 10 minutes if you do not encounter any errors perfect uh, you know after 10 minutes you can just go ahead back to Intel XTU and reduce the setting by another 20 so let's go to negative 100 now apply those settings run prime 95 for 10 minutes as well so keep doing it it's a cycle you just keep doing it again and again until you encounter some error I'm going to show you now a demonstration on what the error looks like for my CPU on screen here, this demonstration is uh, showing, I'm showing you a negative 190 millivolts. Uh, this is unstable for my CPU and uh, Prime95 will indicate errors. So over here where I'm scrolling my mouse to, you can see one error there in the circle. Uh, so it tells me that, yeah, the CPU is unstable. It needs more voltage than that here. So if you got error, 
you know what? It's okay. Exit prime or stop prime 95 and uh, increase your voltage by 20 millivolts. Then run your stress test for uh, six hours just to be sure it's stable. If you come across this, which is the famous blue screen of death, firstly, don't freak out. This means that your settings are too aggressive and the computer crashed on you here. So what it means is you're giving too little voltage to CPU and it's just not happy, you can't handle it. Uh, you know what, before you run any of this test, make sure you save any important work because the last thing you're gonna do is lose any important work while you're running all the stress tests here. And now what happens from here on is the computer reset back in the windows cool thing about this application is it will reset every settings to default again so run another stress test uh, based on the new setting which is less aggressive than what you did before there on screen i got a side by side comparison between the before and after voltage changes uh, now let's talk about before you can see the green line that's bouncing around everywhere that's the thermal throttling that i talked about earlier on here so if you notice the clock speed there it's running about 2.7 to 2.8 gigs uh, fairly consistently around that range there uh, with that thermal throttling issue after the changes um, with the voltage there, you can see the temperature has been reduced by 4 degrees Celsius and also the clock speed is a consistent 3.1 gigahertz. For me, it's a win-win situation. I got more speed and lower temperature, uh, which is basically my goal. Now, I do understand most games don't even use up to 100% CPU utilization. Uh, the closest game that pushes the CPU to its limits is Battlefield 1. And I noticed on some maps in multiplayer, it uses up to 85% CPU utilization. Uh, most other games, it's only about 40%, so nothing to worry about. But do not forget, this laptop is the worst case scenario. Both CPU and GPU is sharing the same heat exchanger. What that means for thermal performance is if the CPU is running too hot, uh, the GPU cannot cool down as effectively. Now here we have both before and after voltage adjustments on a 3D mark benchmark for the Skydiver test. Focus your attention on physics score. Physics is highly reliant on the CPU power and processing capabilities. Uh, as you can see both comparisons here, there's hardly any difference at all. Two frames per second is unnoticeable, so it's near identical uh, performance you're getting. These benchmarks only run about four or five minutes, so they do not even heat up the hardware. Uh, temperature is not a factor when it comes to these benchmarks, as this is not a stress test at all. Obviously, in real world gaming, there's going to be much more heat produced compared to a 4-5 or five minute benchmark. If this is too technical for you, feel free to check out this video right here. And this is the quickest or easiest way to reduce heat in your CPU at a small cost to performance. And leave a comment down below if you have any questions for me or perhaps brag about how much you're gaining in terms of temperature or performance by undervolting your CPU here. If you have any questions, go ahead, ask ahead, and uh, if you like this video, leave a like.